Many Magic the Gathering players asked the question, how do I build my first Commander deck? Wizards of the Coast releases pre-constructed decks to help newer players begin playing Commander right away, which, as I've always said, is a great place to begin. You might have already started with one of these decks, and if you're completely new to the format, I'd recommend picking one of them up. They are affordable and complete and allow you to do what I want you to be able to do. Sit down and play. If, though, you're wanting to try something fresh or you've played a lot of Magic in other formats and want to get your brewing hat on, building a new deck from scratch might be for you. So if you are ready to harness the fires of invention, you're going to need some pointers on how best to utilize that creativity. Even if Commander is a casual format, there are still things to be aware of when it comes to deck building. From the number of lands to include, the number of removal cards, you'll need to be aware of the general look and feel of a commander deck so that you can sit down confidently with your new deck to enjoy a game. There's nothing worse than your deck just crashing to a halt, and though that will invariably happen from time to time due to the random nature of the game, there are things that we can consider during deck building that will reduce the chances of that occurring. Throughout this video, I'll be your guide through the ins and outs of the process. Guide is a good way to put it, actually. The information I'll be sharing with you about numbers is just that, guidance, not rules. These statistics work as a framework for you to build around and, depending on who you choose as your commander and the deck that you wish to construct, they can and do change. Let's begin with the deck outline. A commander deck can easily be broken down into the following categories. Lands, ramp, draw, removal, board wipe, synergy. Lands are the bread and butter of any deck and are probably the most important thing to get right. Too many lands and you'll often sit there with nothing to cast. Not enough and you'll have a handful of spells and no way to cast them. It's generally accepted that the starting point for lands is 37 to 38. Again, this is a very basic template I'm offering here and if you're a deck that uses landfall, for example, or big mana, you may want more. If your curve is super low and you're playing with a lot of expensive mana rocks, it might be less. Keep in mind that any land that doesn't tap for mana, like Maze of Ith, should really be counted as a spell and not a land. One common misconception is that you can shave off lands for each mana rock or ramp source you're including. Hitting your land drop every turn is still crucial to having a good game. And if you do go too low, you can find yourself stuck missing land drops despite having all the mana rocks in the world. While it is true that ramp is important and can help, it's more more of an accelerant. Ramp is another pillar of deck building. You should generally run 10 or more ramp sources in your deck. Ramp allows you to cast spells ahead of curve and race ahead of the competition. Depending on your deck, it can take the form of being spell-based, like Cultivate, or it might be the form of creatures, also known as mana dorks, like Llanowar Elves. Perhaps your ramp will be in the form of artifacts, like Commander's Sphere, or even on enchantments, like Wolf Willow Haven. Ramp can also help to negate missed land drops, but as I said before, this is a bonus and not the goal. Card draw is the next pillar. Like with ramp, you should aim for at least 10 cards that draw you cards. Drawing cards is one of the best things to do in Magic and should always be keen to draw more cards. Where possible, go for repeatable draw like Guardian Project or bursts of draw like Blue Sun Zenith. While Wall of Blossoms does draw you a card, you generally want a little more bang for your buck. Removal is our interaction. We need to be able to answer threats, and we need to be confident we'll have answers frequently enough. Six to eight single target removal spells is a good starting point. Some of those may be for artifacts and enchantments like Return to Dust, while others will be for creatures like Go for the Throat. You'll need a balance and, where possible, try and get either versatility or value. Anguished Unmaking is flexible and hits most things, while Volcanic Offering can hit up to four targets with some careful politicking. Board wipes are for when single target removal isn't enough. 
There will be games where things look dire, and you'll be happy to top deck one of these blanket answers. A minimum of five is a good number to aim for with board wipes. And like with single target removal, these should either be flexible, like Estieu Command, asymmetrical, like Winds of Abandon, or give us something back for taking a turn off, like the card draw on Decree of Pain. Synergy is the backbone of your deck. It's the main game plan. This is generally 30 or so cards. Are you playing an Enchantress deck? Your enchantments will generally fall into here. If you're in a combat-focused deck, you'll find your creatures and your extra combat spells here as well. Any kind of recursion or protection, such as Savine's Reclamation or Heroic Intervention, will generally fall in here too. Now you might notice that creatures are missing from this breakdown. Well, that's because generally creatures either fall mostly into the synergy section, especially if they're tribal, or as often as possible, they want to be the cards that are actively ramping you, drawing you cards, or dealing with your opponent's threats. Whilst it's fun to run some beat stick creatures like a Chroma, Angel of Wrath, we want most of our creatures to have a utility or effect beyond just smashing face. Noxious Gear Hulk, for example, in an artifact deck can be removal, and also trigger things that care about artifacts, as well as being a very good attacking body. Generally, in a commander deck, you are going to be running upwards of 25 creatures, and if your strategy revolves around them, such as in a tribal deck, or one that wants to win the game through combat damage, that number will be closer to 30 to 35. Creature count is probably one of the more fluid statistics, though, as spell slinger decks can often run 10 or fewer creatures. It's really dependent on your deck, so stick with synergy as the better indicator of your overall game plan. So we have our stat breakdown of what our deck should look like, but there's one important thing to decide. Who is our commander? Picking a commander will always be a process that is unique to you. It might be that you like a certain tribe, like Merfolk and who can blame you if you do? Or you might like to play with plus one plus one counters and need a commander that facilitates that. Picking your first commander usually comes down to one of two reasons, either picking something that your current collection supports or just being drawn toward a certain character or style of gameplay that you simply have to have a go at. So give it some thought. It's not going to be as easy as just opening up a booster pack, oh, speaking of which, and getting a legendary, right? Well, you know, look, for fun, let's. <laughs> Oh, 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 well, actually, wow. Yeah, Perforos, Perforos. Okay, let's build Perforos. New Perforos is a super exciting card. He's an indestructible red enchantment god for starters. And that ability that puts huge creatures into play for just three mana, it's like sneak attack on a commander. Although those creatures are sacrificed at the end of the turn, he gives them haste so they'll be sure to make an impact. But in answering one question, which commander should I be using, we've opened up the door to many more. How many creatures should we be running in this deck? Should any of them be artifacts? Which cards are best suited to help Perforos as a commander? What kind of removal should I run, and should any of it be on my creatures? There's a lot to consider here. It can be a little daunting to build an entire deck all on your own, so where do you start? Luckily, there are several amazing resources online to help make the process of building your very first deck a whole lot easier. You'll be able to find cool cards that you can use with your new commander with ease using these tools. For this video, we're going to start by using EDH Rec, one of the most popular deck building tools online to help us get through the deck building process and ensure that we don't end up EDH Wrecked. EDH Recommendations. EDH RAC, as many know it, is short for EDH Recommendations, and it compiles data online to help make recommendations and suggestions for cards you might like to play in your commander decks. Many Magic the Gathering players like to post their decks online to share their deck lists with other people. If we're building Perforos Bronze Blooded, we could go spend a ton of time rifling through deck lists online to see what other players are playing in their Perforos deck. However, EDH Rec saves 
us time because it gathers information from all of those Perforos decks from all over the internet in one convenient place and shows us the cards that appear most frequently amongst those deck lists. This helps clue us in on what other people are doing with Perforos, which can signal to us that these cards work really well with his abilities. Some players may worry that this type of tool will cause their decks to become too samey, homogenous with one another, that perhaps EDH Rec is doing all the thinking in deck building for them, and that running all the same cards everyone else is running might make their deck less special. But nothing could be further from the truth. EDH Rec is just a tool, like any other, and its goal isn't to tell you what cards you must run, but rather to provide cards for consideration. You are still building your own deck, you are still making the final decisions, and EDH Rec is just a tool to aid you in this process. Like any tool, it's going to come down to how you use it. And as a tool, it is one of the most effective for you as someone building a brand new commander deck. Let's get building our deck. Upon navigating to the page for Perforos Bronze Blooded, a bounty of information is made available to help us forge a plan. For instance, out of over 300 Perforos deck lists online, 83% of them are playing Felden of the Third Path, and 69% of them are playing Ilharg the Razbor, which also help cheat big creatures into play, giving Perforos some extra help. If you're new to magic or new to this style of deck, you might not have known about these cards. And as it turns out, they are very good includes here. What about the actual creatures Perforos wants to put into play? EDH Rec reveals that over 70% of players are using creatures like Draxeth, Maw of Flame, which does copious damage to his enemies, and cards like Dragon Mage and Itali, Primal Storm, which helps him resupply by giving him tons of cards. These cards tick multiple boxes for us in the context of our deck breakdown. They're synergy cards we want to cheat into play with our commander's ability, but also cards that fulfill removal and card draw. It's no surprise that these powerful cards end up the most played, and we're happy to take note. These picks were from the high synergy section, which means these cards are more unique to Perforos compared to other decks. There's also his top card section, which shows other popular cards that lots of other red decks are using. Here we see commander staples, such as the ever popular Chaos Warp or Meteor Golem, both of which are used by over 70% of Perforos players to help red deal with enchantments, a permanent type red usually struggles to get rid of. We'll be happy to take those to fill out our removal section. More importantly though, we find some important synergies here that make Perforos even more exciting than he already is, including Sundial of the Infinite and Conjurer's Closet. These can be used to avoid Perforos's downside of sacrificing the creatures he puts into play. Conjurer's Closet can exile the creature and return it to the battlefield, which means it doesn't have to be sacrificed at all. And Sundial can be used in response to the end of turn trigger, ending the turn before he has to sacrifice a creature, so you can keep it permanently. We can scroll through Perforos's page to see the most popular cards from his deck, as well as his most popular creatures, instants, sorceries, artifacts, lands, picking our favorites as we go. Buried Ruin is a land played in 26% of decks, and is a great way to get back any artifact creatures we sneak into play with Perforos. It's always good to include utility lands in our mana base, and Buried Ruin is a land I'm pretty excited to include. If we hover over any card and click the plus sign, EDH Rec will keep track of that card for you with a clipboard at the bottom of the screen, so you can remember all the cards you like and export that list later. Nice. Let's look at some of the other useful features that can help you find good cards for your deck on EDH Rec. For example, if you just want a snapshot of your deck really quickly and don't want to scroll through dozens and dozens of cards, you can go to the top of the Perforos page and use the Average Deck button. EDH Rec will compile the most popular cards from each card type and provide a full deck list that uses those cards, giving you a fast way of hammering out a deck filled with the cards the community has agreed work really well with him as commander. Alternatively, let's say you know for certain that you want to play the card Utvara Hellkite, a dragon that creates even 
more dragons in your Perforos deck. 45% of Perforos decks include Utvara Hellkite, which means 55% of players aren't running it. EDH Rec has an advanced filters section, which you can use to help tailor the recommendations more closely with your preferred cards. Using these filters will show you information from just the Perforos deck lists that include Utvara Hellkite. So if you really like dragons and you're looking to build a dragon-based Perforos deck, this can help you find more of them for Perforos to put into play. It also helps us refine our other picks. Dragon's Horde is a nice option for ramp that can also help with card draw. Now it's only played in 17% of Perforos decks, but when we look at decks that run more dragons, the card is more commonly used. You can also use these filters to show lists that exclude certain cards you're sure you don't want to play to help find better recommendations from decks that line up with your preferences. It's all about refining the results to ensure you end up with the best data possible. Of course, magic cards can be expensive. Over half of Perforos's decks include the card Balefire Dragon, which costs at least twice as much money as Perforos himself. If we're on a budget and don't want to break the bank just to build a new commander deck, EDH Rec has us covered. At the top of each commander's page is a set of budget filters called Cheap and expensive. Clicking on expensive will show only the information from the top 10% of Perforos decks that cost the most money. Clicking on cheap shows us only information from the top 10% of Perforos decks that cost the least amount of money. Magic can be a very expensive hobby, so these are invaluable tools for players who want to build a powerful deck on a budget and want to find great cards that don't cost a ton of money, while still maintaining powerful synergy with their commander. For instance, where Ancient's Tread shows up in 42% of these budget decks, mirroring another powerful enchantment we saw on Perforos's page, Warstorm Surge. Both of these can help Perforos deal even more damage even without those super expensive creatures. Using the budget filter also reveals a high popularity for cards like Chaos Maw and Bloodfire Colossus, which can deal damage to all other creatures. These are perfect for Perforos to keep the board clear of tiny tokens that would chump block his mighty beasts, and keep small armies from attacking him back. You don't need to spend $15 for a Balefire Dragon to deal 6 damage to some creatures. Bloodfire Colossus can deal 6 damage too, and it only costs a quarter. Cards like these can help to fulfill our board wipes category, alongside more traditional sorcery-based wraths like the 50 cent chain reaction played in 25% of Perforos decks. If you're looking for ideas for your commander and you see that people are playing them with a lot of expensive cards, don't fret. Budget options always exist to make that commander a ton of fun even without the pricey cards. And tools like these budget filters can be invaluable at helping you find great synergies without breaking the bank. Oh, and if you want to use that average deck feature on this budget page, it will curate the list to exclude the super expensive cards for you too. There's one more useful feature we should look at before we finish up, and that's the recent decks feature. EDH Rec doesn't just compile the data from the deck lists it finds online. It actually saves all those lists lists too. That way, if we want to go looking not just through collections of data, but through specific deck lists, we can do so. On the top right hand side of each commander's page, we'll see recent content that includes those commanders, such as articles or YouTube videos that involve this commander. And right below that, the recent decks tab. Clicking on the more decks button beneath this section takes us to a page that lists all the Perforos decks in the whole database. You can click on the view deck list button and it will take you to the right deck list. So you can zoom in on specific players' lists to see what they're up to with this commander. Rather than Googling over and over for Perforos decks, we can sift through them right here in one convenient place. The list here shows the basic breakdown of each card type within the deck list. So if you want to organize it by the number of creatures the deck contains, or the number of lands, or by price, or only see decks that commit to a certain tribe or theme, you can use these filters to help out. The tips and tricks I've brought to you today are the same ones the folks that EDH Rec like to use when they're building new decks. Whether it's filtering for decks that include specific cards, paying attention to budget, or just checking out other deck lists to take the hassle out of deck building, it can make the whole process a lot easier. I'll link all of these resources in the notes, including a sample deck list for the budget Perforos that we built together today, which was compiled using the same techniques and features discussed in this video, with no individual card worth over $10. Let's see how the deck compares to our breakdown from earlier.
As you can see, we've more than satisfied the guidelines. If you add up the total, you'll find that it's actually 128, which is more than the amount of cards in our deck. Though we only have 100 cards, we have multiple cards that both feed into our synergy, cheating big, dangerous creatures into play and taking advantage of them, and also our other categories. Dragonfire Mage and Runehorn Hellkite both draw us cards, but they also both hit for a strong 5 damage in the air, for instance. And Myriad Landscape is both a land and a Way to ramp. At this stage, you're going to want to streamline your list, choosing which cards to keep and which cards to cut. If you'd like more information about streamlining, how to know which cards to keep and which to cut, you can watch my video on that here. This video sought to leave you armed with the knowledge of how to break down the specific rules of cards in your deck and provide you with an introduction to some of the most useful tools to help you build it. Using that knowledge, you've been able to build a perfectly playable Perforos Bronze-Blooded Commander deck, but you can apply these techniques you've learned today to any commander, god or otherwise. Ready for the next step? Check out my more advanced guide here, or just peruse my playlist of commander content including deck techs, gameplay strategy, and other commander guides I have compiled over the years. That's linked here and also in the video description. Either way, I hope very much this video has been of some help to you, and if so, the biggest help you could give me in return is just by passing it along to a friend, maybe hitting that subscribe button, or leaving a comment. Let me know in the comments below whether you found this video helpful and what future videos you'd like to see. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a Commander pre-constructed deck? The year is 2020, and though we may be far apart, new Magic the Gathering product releases are not. This year's Commander decks are tied to the plane of Ikoria, with commanders and mechanics, and even a wide selection of cards, being from the monstrous plane. And Wizards of the Coast has also increased from the usual four commander decks to a selection of five, but has quality increased along with it? What about reprint value or the value of all these new cards? Last but not least, just how fun are these decks to play and which one is my top pick? Let's take a look.